Chapter 1, Security Awareness, is Introduction to Security. In this unit, you should have an understanding and be able to describe the challenges of securing information, define information security, and explain why it is important. Identify the types of attackers that are common today, and describe how to build a security strategy. Some of the challenges of securing information are there is no single simple solution that exists today for protecting computers and securing information. There are different types of attacks and there's difficulties in defending against these different types of attacks. Some of today's attacks are businesses experiencing data breaches, Last week and over the weekend, you probably heard of Home Depot having a security breach. They're not sure exactly how long the breach occurred, but they do know that on the black market, the information that they have gathered has now become available for those who purchase such things on the black market. There is cybercrime, and that has affected over 400 million adults just in one year. And Apple Macs have been infected with malicious software called Flashback. If you use iCloud, you may have heard also this past week of celebrities who had their pictures uh, taken off of their iCloud accounts and published. These were private videos and pictures that they didn't expect others to see. There's personal medical devices that could be the next target of attackers. You can actually Bluetooth in or um, have the IP address of the insulin pump that someone is wearing, uh, and you can adjust the levels of insulin that they're receiving. So this can be a rather scary concept, but the technology is actually out there. The Belgium credit provider had customer information stolen. Basically what they did, the attackers threatened to publish information um, if the company did not pay. This particular company actually shut down their servers and prosecuted the attackers. You have email accounts can be compromised. The attacker sent um, bogus emails to a account owner's contacts asking them to wire money. I'm sure you've heard of that one. Uh, so there's different types of things that can happen with your email account. There's a threat of pre-existent malware, malware on devices that are imported and sold in the U.S. Uh, carjackings occur with attacks. You can break into the car's electronic systems. And then there's the Nigerian 419 advanced fee fraud. And that is the top internet scam. It has cost victims over 41 billion to date, and that is of to the date that this book was published. In your book is Table 1-1. You'll need to pay attention to that. Just go over and see the different organizations, the types of security breaches that occurred, and how many entities were exposed when this breach happened. Some of the difficulties in defending against attacks uh, you have universally connected devices. Who at this moment isn't connected to the internet? You are by being part of this online lecture. If you have a smartphone, you're connected to other devices because you're all part of one giant network. There's the increased of speed of attacks. Uh, how quickly do email attacks get forwarded on from your account onto others who are part of you? There's greater sophistication related to attacks. The availability and simplicity of attack tools. You do not need a programming degree any longer to create attack tools. You can actually go to the web, find sites that allow you to do this from their site. You have faster detection of different vulnerabilities. Once it's found, it spreads rapidly. Then there's the delays in securing and creating the updates for different companies. Just because they found out about the 
attack today doesn't mean that they'll have an answer or solution implemented by tomorrow. There's weak security update distribution. Not all companies distribute their updates and their patches. Microsoft and Apple both uh, send out patches on a schedule. So if the attack, let's say Microsoft creates their patches and pushes them out on Thursday, if the attack happens on Thursday, you're going to have to wait at least another week before a patch is sent out if that particular vulnerability is found and updated in that batch of patches. There's distributed attacks and then there's user confusion. Uh, you don't know if that email you received that said, hey, eBay had problems with their server, you need to log back in by clicking on this link or you get a pop-up that says you need to update your virus protection and it may not necessarily be from your software, it may be a virus. Table 1-2 in your book is going to show you the difficulties in defending against these types of attacks. What is information security? What do we need to know? Well, the common information security terminology you need to know. It's helpful for creating defenses for your computer and the importance of information security itself. Security are the necessary steps to protect a person or property from harm. Some examples are security for your home. Do you have a burglar system? How are you protected from natural forces? Security is inversely proportional to convenience. The more secure something is, the less convenient it is. Information security is the task of securing information in a digital format. It ensures protective measures are properly implemented and it protects information with value to people and organizations. Three protections that must be extended are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. You will see this referred to as CIA at times in this book and in other security fields. Information security must protect devices that store, process, and transmit information. So if you have a device that just stores but doesn't process and transmit, then information security doesn't have to protect that. Um, information protected by the three layers are products, people, and policies and procedures. You want your products to remain secure. You want the people who use your products to keep that information secure. And then the policies and procedures are put in place to ensure that this happens. Some of the terminology that you need to know is asset, that is something of value. What is a threat? Well, it's a type of action with potential to cause harm. The threat agent is the person or element or group with power to carry out that threat. Vulnerability is the flaw or weakness that allows the threat agent to bypass your security. You can exploit the security weakness that's taking advantage of the vulnerability. You have risk, and that's what is the likelihood that a threat agent will exploit a vulnerability. You have some degree of risk must always be assumed. You can't always assume that everything is 100% secure. There's always a risk out there. There's three options in dealing with risk. You have to accept it. You can diminish it or make it smaller, or you can transfer that threat to something else. Some of the importance of information security are some of the goals is to prevent data theft. You want to thwart the identity theft. You want to avoid legal consequences if you have identity theft. You want to be able to maintain productivity and you need to be able to force cyber terrorism. Data theft 
examples are stealing business information, stealing personal credit card numbers, uh, like dumpster diving and getting that information, stealing a person's information, using information to impersonate that victim, and usually motivated by financial gain. You can avoid legal consequences. There are laws that are in place. There's laws protecting electronic data privacy. You have the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. That's HIPAA. You have the Sarbay's Oxley Act of 2002, often referred to as Sarbox. You have the Graham Leach Bliley Act or GLBA. You have the California Database Security Breach Act of 2003. Then you also need to maintain productivity. You need to be in a habit of cleaning up after an attack diverts resources. You need to keep your virus databases up to date so that this doesn't happen. If you have cyber terrorism going on, it is premeditated, typically politically motivated attacks against a computer system. It's intended to cause panic, to provoke violence, or just cause financial catastrophe. Possible cyber terrorist targets are the banking industry, air traffic control centers, and water systems. Who are the attackers? Well, it's several categories. You have your cyber criminals, which are different than your cyber terrorist. You have script kitties. You have spies. You have insiders. Those are the people who work for you and close to you who just get mad and give out your information. You have hacktivists. These are activists who hack your system because of their common good. And then you have government agencies. And yes, government agencies may actually attack or gather your information. For the cyber criminal are basically people who launch attacks against other users and their computers. A specific definition is it's a loose network of highly motivated attackers. Many belong to organized gangs of attackers and their targets are individuals and businesses or businesses and governments. Script kitties. Attackers who lack knowledge necessary to perform attack on their own. These are the ones who are going to use the different websites to create their attacks. They use automated attack software. They can purchase those exploit kits for fee from other attackers and they get these from the website. Over 40% of attacks require low or no skills. They do it for the fun of it. Spies are people hired to break into a computer and steal information. They do not randomly search for unsecured computers. They're hired for a specific reason, for a specific computer, for a specific system. Their goal is to break into the computer or the computer system or the network, and they take information without drawing attention to themselves. They get in, get the information, get out, and give it to the ones who purchased it generally possess excellent computer skills because they have to be able to navigate without being caught. An insider is an organization's own employees, contractors, business partners. One study showed that 48% of data breaches are caused by insiders accessing information. Most inside attacks are sabotage or theft of intele intellectual property. That's the information that your company creates on its own, that it's its intelligence, it's its creation. Most sabotage comes from employees who have recently been demoted, reprimanded, or left the company. Cyber terrorists um, spread misinformation and propaganda. They deny service to legitimate computer users. They cause critical infrastructure outage and corrupt vital data. And their attacks are probably ideologically motivated. Hacktivists are motivated by ideology. They direct hacks at specific websites 
and they may p uh, promote a political agenda or they may retaliate for a specific prior event. They didn't like what your company did or what your company stands for. Government agencies may instigate attacks against their own citizens or foreign governments. Some of these examples of attacks by government agencies, there was a malware flame targeted at computers in Eastern Europe. There was malware Stuxnet. It was targeted a nuclear power plant near po the Persian Gulf. And the Iranian government reads email messages of 30,000 citizens. And they're doing this to try to track down dissidents. To build a comprehensive security strategy, there's four key elements you need to pay attention to. You need to be able to block attacks. You need to be able to update your defenses when these attacks occur. You need to be able to minimize your losses. You need to be able to send secure information. And these tactics have been used since the Middle Ages because we're always trying to protect ourselves. Some of the block attacks, some examples are you had a medieval castle and it was designed to, to prevent the block attacks. It had high protective stone walls, it had your moat, it gave you a security parameter. So you want to do that now with your computer network. You want to have a secure parameter. You do not want people to be able to get into your system, so you want to be able to foil, to foil those attacks as they occur. You need to be able to keep your systems up to date as attacks become more advanced, your defenses need to be able to adjust and advance as well. You need to be able to minimize your loss. What steps can you put into place to minimize losses if an attack does occur? One of them is to create backups of your important data. That way you can go back to the point prior to the attack and regain your information. You want to be able to send secure information and we do that through encryption or scrambling the data so that other eyes cannot see it. So in summary, your attacks against information security has grown exponentially in recent years. It's difficult to defend against today's attacks. You never know where they're coming from. Information security definition is protecting the integrity, confidentiality, and availability of information on devices that store, transmit, and process information. Information security goals are to protect against data theft, identify theft and cyber terrorism, avoid legal consequences, and maintain productivity. Your attackers fall into several categories. They have different motivations, different targets, and different skill levels. And finally, the elements of comprehensive security strategy is to block attacks, update defenses, minimize losses, and send secure information. This week you need to make sure that you've read Chapter 1 and completed the assignments in Chapter 1 module.